The Lake District is a very special place to rock climb. It is the birth of rock climbing in Britain. There's a very, very strong tradition of trail climbing in the lakes. It was born here at a very, very early stage in sort of British rock climbing history. Traditions here are like upheld pretty strongly compared to other areas. I think Lake District climbers are quite proud of the fact that their roots are quite hard. There's no giveaways. Back when climbing started in the lakes, 1880s, um, the equipment was incredibly simple. They had some boots with nails in, which would be workman's boots. Um, they had a rope, which was not a modern style climbing rope. The probability was if you fell off, it snapped. The techniques for climbing were very, very rudimentary. What we now take for granted as ways of attaching ourselves to the rock face just didn't happen they basically, one person climbed, found a ledge, stood on the ledge, held the rope while the other person came up, and then the first person would lead on again. And if anybody slipped, the probability was everybody would be killed. Climbing in the lake started in the early part of the 19th century. Um, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, who was a very well-known poet, descended a climb called Broad Stand. The real kicking it all off was Walter Parry Haskett Smith, who descended a, a climb called Needle Ridge, and then made the first ascent of a pinnacle called uh, Nape's Needle, which is today is graded hard severe. And he climbed it alone, nail boots, no idea whether it was possible or not which was an unbelievably bold thing to do. A day out in the lakes involves a long walk in, probably up to a high mountain crag. You're going to need your waterproof shoes because it's probably going to be boggy or there's going to be river crossings. And it's just a great experience to be like up high in the mountains with amazing views, especially here like over Langdales um, and potentially getting benighted and walking down in the dark. Today we're going up to Gimmer Crag in Langdale. It's a really nice south facing crag, gets loads of sun. Walking's probably about an hour, which is not that far for lake standards. There she is, that on the skyline there, and then just around the corner is our route. Gimmer Crag is about 350 feet high. The lower section is not very impressive, it's got a lot of ledges but the final 200 feet is basically a sheet of rock with not a lot of big obvious cracks and features on it. It's a route called Oliverson's Variation and Lion's Crawl. It's a V-diff, four pitches long, with the first pitch doing a, a traverse rightwards, second pitch straight up, third pitch traverse rightwards again, and fourth pitch straight up. But we're gonna climb it in three pitches just because we can speed things up a little bit and Stringing the first and second pitches together actually makes a really nice long first pitch. On the 7th of July 1907, B Route was first climbed by H.B. Lyon, J. Stables and the writer. While C.H. Oliverson and Partu were working out their variation route on A, Lion, Stables and the writer were similarly occupied on an exploration which resulted in the discovery of the B route. Both Lion and Stables had an idea that a route would be found up this face of the crag, but more to the right. A faintly defined gully, the upper part of which can be discerned from below, seemed to justify their opinion. Reaching the foot of the crag, we found that it was not possible to break away from the A route until the second pitch was passed. Roping up, in the following order, Lion, Stables and the writer started upwards.
the way HB Lyon describes it in the text is the third pitch really sounds like the meat of the root where the or the most interesting part of the root where you're kind of linking up from a root and into the groove of B root via this traverse which they christened Lion's Crawl. The bravery is astounding when H.B. Lion looked at the, what we now call Lion's Crawl in that he had no idea whether that was feasible as a piece of climbing. It had not been and looked, it had not been to the top and looked down or anything like that. Literally it was a case of from the ledge, I think I can climb over there, I'll go and look. After waiting for a second man to come up, the leader found that he could work out onto the face across the steep slabs to his right, and he continued his traverse in an upward direction. This traverse was long and owing to his exposed situation, rather sensational. On this lion's crawl section, there's a couple of sort of like big strides rightwards between slightly sloping footholds, which in modern rock shoes, you don't think twice about doing it, it's fine. In hobnail boots with virtually no friction and super rigid soles, definitely would have been something that would make you pay attention to what you were doing, difficulty wise, but also if you add in the consequences of failure, it would have been quite a serious challenge. After working around this ledge, which, by the way, requires some very delicate balancing, Lion found a comfortable recess with a grassy floor, which we afterwards named the Crow's Nest. Here, there was ample room for two, and what was more important, an excellent belay. So back when H.P. Lyon did the first ascent, he would have merely had a hemp rope tied around his waist with no form of protection at all. The rope's really only there to help protect the second when they come up. So as a lead climber, you are effectively soloing. I wouldn't normally go and seek out a V-diff, but I was amazed at the quality of the climbing. The lakes is blessed with lots and lots of really classic lower grade routes. Who are they good for? They're good for everyone. I mean, like, climbing is just about enjoying yourself at whatever, whatever grade and whatever ability. And even if you're climbing E10, you know, it doesn't mean you can't have fun on a V-diff and enjoy yourself. Just go out and get some air underneath your feet and have a good time. Mm -hmm.